Welcome back everyone. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more content. Welcome back friends to Citrix Interview Preparation Part 3 video. In our last video we covered first 40 technical Citrix interview questions and answers, this video will cover remaining 40 questions and answers. Make sure to like and subscribe for upcoming Citrix troubleshooting questions answers video. What are different types of machines you can create in a machine catalog? You can create server OS machines or desktop OS machines or also you can create remote PC access. Can we create single machine and two machine catalogs? The answer is no, this functionality is not supportive. What is the difference between pooled random and pooled static? Pooled random is most commonly used for standard users. The desktops are assigned randomly. When the user logs off, the desktop becomes free and is available for another user. Any changes made to the desktops are undone on reboot. Pooled static desktops are for task workers who need the same desktop every time they log on. These desktops are assigned to a single user and on user log off this desktop is not free for other users. On rebooting, any changes made to these desktops are undone like pooled random. What is a delivery group? A delivery group is a collection of machines selected from one or more machine catalogs. The delivery group specifies which users can use those machines, the applications, and desktops available to those users. Can we have one machine in two delivery groups? One machine can be used in only one delivery group. What is the Citrix VDA? The Virtual Delivery Agent, VDA, enables connections to applications and desktops. The VDA is installed on the Citrix server that runs the applications or virtual desktops for the user. Citrix VDA, Virtual Delivery Agent, is a piece of software accompanied with Zenup slash Zendesktop Suite, which requires to be installed on a client devices, VM or physical, desktop OS or server OS, Windows or Linux, whose application or complete desktop is to be published to user for remote access. Can VDA be installed on Windows 2003 server? No, the VDA is only supported on Windows 2008 R2 SP1, 2012, 2012 R2, 7 SP1, 8 and 8.1 and above versions. How do you keep a VDA machine in maintenance mode? First, go to Studio Console then, search for the machine you want to keep in maintenance mode then right-click on the machine and select Maintenance Mode. What is Machine Creation Services? Citrix Machine Creation Services is a component of the Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop solution that is coupled within the delivery controller. Using application programming interfaces, APIs, from the underlying hypervisor or cloud provider, MCS builds intelligent linked clones from a master image to provision multiple virtual desktops. The clones include a differencing disk and an identity disk linked from a base disk. Machine Creation Services, MCS, configures, starts, stops, and deletes virtual machines using the hypervisor APIs. MCS is a disk-based provisioning approach that works with major hypervisors and leading cloud platforms. What is Provisioning Services, PVS? Provisioning Services, PVS, is software streaming technology that delivers patches, updates, and other configuration information to multiple virtual desktop endpoints through a shared desktop image. It centralizes virtual machine management while reducing the operational and storage costs of a virtualized desktop environment. What are common services in Citrix PVS? Followings are most common PVS services. Citrix PVS SOAP service. Citrix PVS Stream service. Citrix PVS TFTP service. And Citrix PVS PXE service. What is a SOAP service? SOAP service is one of the key services in provisioning server. You can connect to PVS console using SOAP service using port number is 54321. What are some common PVS port numbers? UDP 6890-6909 used by provisioning server-to-server -server communication using the messaging manager. UDP 6910-6930 used for VDisk streaming between target device and PVS server. 
UDP 6910 is used as login when a device is booting. UDP 6901, 6902, 6905 for target device to PVS server traffic. TCP 54321 to 54323 is for SOAP server communication when accessing the PVS console. UDP 69 used for TFTP communication inbound to PVS server. And UDP 6969 is for TSB communication inbound to PVS server. What is FARM in PVS? FARM is the top level of a PVS infrastructure. The farm contains sites, PVS servers, stores, VDISCs, target devices etc. What is VDISC in PVS? VDISC means virtual disk. You use PVS to stream the VDISC across the network to target devices when they boot up. What is the difference between standard mode and private mode in PVS? Standard mode is used when VDISC needs to shared by multiple target devices. Whereas, private mode can be used if a VDISC is only used by a single target device. What happens when database is offline on PVS? When the database becomes unavailable, the stream process uses the snapshot to get information about the Citrix provisioning server and the target devices available to the server. This process allows servers and target devices to remain operational. However, when the database is offline, management functions and the console become unavailable. Tell us about PVS logon process. First the target device boots and acquires an IP address. The target device first identifies a TFTP server. Next the bootstrap file will be downloaded and the target device will be boot from it. The target device will contact and log onto one of the PVS servers. The logon server will notify the target device about the streaming server. Target device starts streaming the VDISC from the PVS server. Just to summarize, PXE is used for getting the TFTP server IP and bootstrap file name details by the clients and TFTP is used for downloading bootstrap program file. What is the key difference between MCS and PVS? The MCS method depends upon storage and PVS relies on network. How to install licenses on license server? Provide the right host ID while downloading the license LIC file from Citrix. Upload the LIC file on license server. While renewing license, please make sure you enter the right host ID before downloading the LIC file. What happens when a Citrix license server goes down? You will have 30 days grace period. During this time users can just launch applications without any issues. After 30 days, existing sessions will be available to connect but new sessions will not happen. What is SSL offloading? A simple SSL offloading setup terminates SSL traffic, HTTPS, decrypts the SSL records, and forwards the clear text, HTTP, traffic to the backend web servers. The traffic from user's device to Netscaler would be SSL, and the Netscaler will offload the SSL traffic and send it to backend server. This helps to reduce load on backend servers. What is STA server in Citrix? STA means Secure Ticket Authority. The Secure Ticket Authority, STA, is responsible for issuing session tickets in response to connection requests for published applications on Citrix virtual apps and published desktops on Citrix virtual desktops. These session tickets form the basis of authentication and authorization for access to published resources. The Secure Ticket Authority, STA, is an XML web service that exchanges Zen App server information for randomly generated tickets. It is used to control access for a Citrix Secure Gateway server. What is Citrix Storefront? Citrix Storefront is an enterprise application store that provides an interface for users to access Zen Desktop and Zen App virtual desktops and applications remotely. What are some benefits or advantage of Storefront? Citrix Storefront is an enterprise app store that improves security and simplifies deployments, delivering a modern, unmatched near-native user experience across Citrix Workspace app on any platform. Storefront makes it easy to manage multi-site and multi-version Citrix virtual apps and desktops environments. 
A core functionality of Storefront is the ability to aggregate and deduplicate common application and desktop resources from multiple Citrix virtual apps and desktops CVAD, sites. This functionality is commonly referred to as multi-site aggregation. Duplicate applications and desktops are identified based on matching application display name and application category properties. This functionality has been available in the console as of version 3.5 and was previously a config file edit. The purpose of multi-site aggregation is to allow Citrix administrators to build redundant CVAD sites for scalability or failure domain reasons, yet present a single application or desktop icon to users instead of per site duplicates, as would be displayed without this feature. How do you load balanced storefront servers in your environment? We can load balanced storefront servers using Citrix Netscaler or Citrix Application Delivery Controller, ADC. The details of storefront servers need to be added to Netscaler to load balance. What happens when storefront server goes down? Existing sessions would be able to launch or reconnect. New sessions will not be possible. It will be important to give the storefront server high availability, since without it, no client can connect to our virtual desktop infrastructure or application Zen Desktop or Zen App. What is the difference between Citrix Receiver and Workspace? Citrix Workspace is the latest version where Citrix Receiver is the older version. We need to have Receiver or Workspace installed on end-user machine to connect to the Citrix environment. What are the critical services on Citrix Storefront Server? Citrix Default Domain Service and Citrix Credential Wallet Service. If I upgrade to Zen App 7.6 from 7.5, do I have to upgrade Storefront? No. You can stay on your current version. However, there might be a situation where a new feature in Zen App will not work with an older component or you won't be able to use a new storefront feature. Why do you need Netscaler Gateway in Citrix environment? The Netscaler Gateway is used and configured to provide our users with secure remote access into our secure corporate network. Citrix Gateway consolidates remote access infrastructure to provide single sign-on across all applications whether in a data center, in a cloud, or if the apps are delivered as SaaS apps. It allows people to access any app, from any device, through a single URL. What is content switching on Netscaler? Content switching enables the Citrix ADC appliance to direct requests sent to the same web host to different servers with different content. For example, you can configure the appliance to direct requests for dynamic content, such as URLs with a suffix of .asp, .dll, or .exe to one server and requests for static content to another server. You can configure the appliance to perform content switching based on TCP, IP headers and payload. What is GSLB on Netscaler? GSLB means Global Server Load Balancing. Citrix ADC appliances configured for GSLB provide disaster recovery and ensure continuous availability of applications by protecting against points of failure in a van, wide area network. GSLB balances the load across data centers by directing client requests to the closest or best performing data center or to surviving data centers if there is an outage. What is virtual IP on Netscaler? Virtual IP is the address of a virtual server to which end users will connect and through which they will eventually be authenticated. What is the difference between MIP and SNIP on Netscaler? You use MIP addresses to connect to the backend servers and reverse network address translation. The MIP address is one of the Netscaler owned IP addresses. Starting with Netscaler software release 9.3, you need not configure a MIP on the appliance. However, if the subnet IP address is not routable to the backend server, then you must configure a routable MIP to communicate with the backend server. Subnet IP address is an IP address that enables you to access a Netscaler appliance from an external host that exists on another subnet. When you add an SNIP address, the appliance adds an entry in the routing table. You need to add only one such entry to the routing table for each subnet. The root entry in the routing table corresponds to the first IP address added to the subnet. You can specify the SNIP in the Netscaler appliance whenever you want to enable it. What is NSIP on Netscaler? 
The Netscaler IP address is the IP address at which you access the Netscaler for management purposes. You must add this IP address when you configure the Netscaler for the first time. The NSIP is also called the management IP address. If you modify this address, you must reboot the Netscaler. How Netscaler Load Balancing Persistence to Specific Member In the Netscaler Load Balancing Persistence rules, it is straightforward to sticky a client IP to the same member server each time. How does Citrix Netscaler licensing differ from the other Citrix product licensing? As an appliance or hardware, Netscaler is separate from most other Citrix products that use a licensed server. It is licensed independently. How do you generate reports in Citrix environment? Citrix Director has the feature to download reports depending upon the requirement. Your manager has requested you to come up with a way for your help desk to monitor and troubleshoot your Zen desktop slash Zen app 7 and above environment without adding on a third party solution. What built in Citrix functionality would you use to do so? Citrix Director enables Level 1 and Level 2 IT support staff to monitor a Zen desktop deployment and perform day to day maintenance tasks. You can also view and interact with a user session using Microsoft Remote Assistance to troubleshoot problems. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe.